you're listening to the Energy is Love podcast. Here we go. The podcast has started. What you just missed is, this is like episode 356, and we have, I think we're approaching, I was going to look too, by the way. We're Are like we? up, coming up on the seventh anniversary. Probably. Of the podcast. I think so. I feel like yes. it was the end of May when the podcast started. End of May, started. beginning of June, something so like that. So we're getting end very close. It's yeah. very close. It to might the, be today. Who knows? Seventh. Maybe it's today. How cool would that be? <laughs> I mean, and uh, we're still working out all the kinks when it yeah. comes to. <laughs> and not the fun podcast. kind. Right. Not the fun kinks. Not the fun one. The unhinged ones. Mm. The ones that shit. Speaking See? of uh, kinks. This isn't that what that. This isn't that episode, though. No. No. We do need to do. I was thinking about a sex episode that we need promise to do this in the one future. is not about this. We're going to talk about communicating right now. You're just witnessing us communicate. <laughs> if somebody's like driving down the road with their, you know, like, ah, yeah. or they're disappointed, they're like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if people like who listens to podcasts with their kids in the car. I don't feel like that happens. A I lot. hope. Well, I hope ours isn't, but. Do you listen I don't to know. podcasts when kids are in the car? How Well, how often are kids in my car? That's true. Yeah. We don't really have kids in the car anymore. Yeah. It's it's very seldom that we get the privilege of driving with our now independent almost 17-year-old. I don't feel like a lot of people are tuning into podcasts right? when their kids are in the car. Probably not. Kids are too busy yelling at you for something or wanting to listen to their music. It, in my brain, though, it's just like I'm like, oh, my gosh. So I don't cute. I don't want anybody to be like, ah. <laughs> I love your brain. So Thank this you. episode, we are going to be discussing communication. And you might think, why? <laughs> you might be a fan of the podcast and wonder, mm -hmm. how do these people think they're going to discuss communication? Right? We listen to you people. Oh. <laughs> will you fix that real quick? I will quick? fix that real quick. And um, But the idea <sighs> is, obviously, it's like immensely integral. Integral isn't even how we pronounce that word correctly. but. In it's so important to every aspect of relationships in life, right? If we can't communicate and if we don't have the ability to communicate effectively, yeah. everything just shuts down, Yeah, right? Well, you definitely doesn't necessarily shut down. It's the end of the world, Steph. But it doesn't really go like the best possible way. Yeah. <laughs> like things are like you're crappy communication and you think you're having one conversation and the other person thinks you're having another conversation. Oh my God, I wish I could find it. I saw this meme or this reel on um, this very thing. You have somebody who is, I think they were going back and forth from like the horoscopes maybe. Somebody who's like an easygoing communicator and somebody who's a conflict communicator. And that's just like a real simple way to put it. But a conflict communicator. I'm just saying that's not what they said, but that's what I'm seeing. Okay. Because it was funny and I'm going to butcher it because we all know that I can't. It's, it, I'm going to do my best. So just sit here for the ride because I'm going to take you on a little ride. <laughs> I'm going to do the best I can. It's what it is. So <laughs> the one is like he starts off with passive aggressive. He's like, where did you go last night or something? Oh, this is Key and Peele. Did you see it? It's so good. Oh, my God. Well, then you tell it because you're it's way so better good. at telling it than yeah, me. Yeah, so it's a text conversation between two friends. Yeah. And it's like two different types of people communicating via text message. Yes. The type of person that sees the world through this lens and the type of person yeah. that sees the world through a different type of lens. <laughs> it's like, hey, where'd you go last night? Motherfucker, what you asking me about where I'm going? I go wherever I want to go. Where'd you go last night? And then he responds with like, nowhere, what about you? Or something, right? So yeah, and it's just, but he's not, he doesn't have attitude. He's like, oh, like. Oh, maybe I missed the first part. Well, no, the one has the attitude, but the next one. So he's like responding with the, yeah. what do you mean this is? And he's like, oh, like. What do I mean? Oh, I wasn't there. Maybe I, I didn't maybe, go. Oh, it's and it's question. just like, he's answering. And then. <laughs> Right. And Keep it going. results, it eventually. one's being calm and one's being everything he thinks the other one is being nice and inviting. And that's how he's responding back. Mm -hmm. And he's like, oh, he's so nice. And the other one's like, what did you just say? <laughs> Thanks for asking. I'm doing fine. How are you? <laughs> oh, this motherfucker wants to play. Okay, fine. We're going to fight. You want to fight? You want to go right now? Yeah, he's like, you want to go right now? <laughs> I would love to. Let's go right now. Are he's, you busy? And then Let's... he's like, oh, he wants to go. <laughs> Keep going. We both did a terrible job, but it's a fun one. We did one. good. You, I was like, I think 
I think the problem is, is we both try to tell the story on our own. And so I thought I was going to accent you. I thought you were going to take a little bit of it. And then I was just going to like pop in for like glitter and sparkle. And I was going to accent your story. You know what? Accessorize. That's accessorize. what I, mean. I was trying to accessorize. I was trying to be a part of your story. It was your story to start. It with. was. So, okay. I was trying to be a part of my story that I invited you in to tell. I wanted to tell it with you. That's how we're just going to do it the whole podcast we did, that way. We did not plan this. Okay. But what we just dis, what we just displayed. It's how you communicate effectively with your partner. <laughs> Follow us for more. <laughs> we have all the tips, tricks, and it's effective communication. to do's, no hows. Right. So the idea, and I love throwing around numbers and figures that I just create and don't really have any like And that causes me anxiety. Science or anything like that. So- 75% of your problems in your relationship or, or in your life stem from uh, unclear communication. And then the other 25% are like actual things that are hidden in your shadow that you need to heal and things like that. But the vast majority of everything that you're struggling with really just breaks or boils down to your inability to communicate your needs, your emotions, your thoughts, as well as your ability to actually hear and receive information from other people. So we're going to get into it today. And that figure that I just threw out, 75, yeah. 25, I just made it up. I know. I just made it up on the spot. It's, I love that you're like so great to do those things. And I also don't love it. I'm like, you cannot give out false information. I, well, I just caveated it. Everything this podcast is, is 100% <laughs> facts. <laughs> okay. Everything this podcast oh, is, is. Did I just throw out a bullshit number you, too? Baby, it's about 93%. Oh, well, that's a little more okay. accurate. Okay. And I just then, got fact checked. And then there's 5% <laughs> just us being silly. And then there's 2% uh, that's straight bullshit. Right. And the truth is, is we always do our best. We show up our best and our opinions and our ideas and our information change. And so we're always like, right. So if you're like, wait a minute, you said this before. We pulled a hundred people. We did. And 63% of that hundred agree that it's okay. (laughs) Thank you you to our 63. (laughs) You know why I, uh, by the way, we didn't pull anybody. Yeah. The reason I do that, I just decided now in this moment. Why do you do it? Because it gives my brain... Like there's a part of my brain that can process information in that form. Okay. Where it's like if we you like process in bar graphs and it's pie not graphs necessarily in bar and graphs. Spreadsheets. I'm not looking in bar graphs and spreadsheets. Okay. It's just a simple one to ten, right? One to ten. You've given a few different ranges of numbers, and one to ten was not one of I them. I understand, but so it's either <gasps> one to ten is the basic form of it. Uh huh. But then we can extrapolate that all the way up to a hundred, right? Zero to a hundred. Do you know what numbers I like? Hmm. Negative 10 to positive 10. Don't fuck around. I'm not fucking around. That is fact. I communicate that effectively. You so don't. I promise. Negative 10 to positive 10. I promise because I feel like the negatives is like how like how bad is this? So like on how, your scale of negative 10 to positive 10. To positive 10. 10. So we got bad, That's, balanced, good if you look at it linearly. Okay. What's the balance? To zero? Yeah. It's balanced, baby. Zero is like super bad. On your scale. So on your your scale, my zero, on your scale, my negative 10 is your zero. Okay. But on my scale, zero is balanced. Zero would be 50%. So you're 50 50. Yeah. There you go. You know, I have a little bit of information from two years of Spanish in high school. Okay. And you know what 50 50 is in French? Oui, oui. Uh, No. Not the literal, like that phrase. Like, how are you feeling? Eh, 50-50. What is that? Come see, come saw. Come see, come saw. Come see, come saw. Did you, maybe I didn't hear right, but did you just say that you had a little bit of language, like from your little bit of Spanish in high school? I said French. Did you say French? I think I heard Spanish and then you gave a French. So either it's your communication here that went How or my cl- listening we're that went we're doing so good we at, are uh giving a bunch of prefaces for people to recognize right? so this episode's all about communication right and before we get into because we have a couple of things to talk about <laughs> like we just displayed a couple <laughs> of the things that we're going to talk about and if and you need more go watch or listen to all the last 355 yeah, episodes of the podcast there. we give you experiences and examples 
Yeah, but before we get into like what you can actually do. We're very do. dedicated to giving you like examples of <laughs> poor communication. <laughs> but we keep trying, damn it. And that's what it's about. It's about showing up. We show up. <laughs> okay. We're very dedicated to it. You could say it's our life work. It really is. Right. To display poor communication skills <laughs> so that you listening know what not to yes. do. Yes. Um, in all honesty, <clears throat> I'm going to throw out another number. <laughs> Is it zero to 10 or <laughs> negative 10 to 10? <laughs> so we think about communication from a bunch of different perspectives. And it's something I think that we don't really, we take it for granted, I think, right? Okay. I know that you and I do, where okay. basically we are, every every single person out there is yeah. having a conversation in their head all the time. Right. We all have an internal dialogue and a narrative mm -hmm. that is just 24 seven. Mm -hmm. So we're constantly in conversation. We're constantly in communication oh with God. ourselves. Go ahead. Squirrel. It's totally a squirrel. Let's hear it. I saw a thing on, I don't know what social media. I'm so excited. Do we get to recreate this oh, conversation? My goodness. No, but it was a thing of where not everybody does that. The majority of people have that, but not everybody has the, has that dialogue. Has that. There's some dialogue. people that have that it doesn't do that. I've never met a person like that. And I don't know if it's real, but I saw people talk about it on social media on them being completely blown away and surprised by the fact that somebody is actually quiet in their head and they don't have a constant running dialogue. So like, if that's, if that's you, first of all, I don't like, if that just reach out, I want to know, I want to, I want to know what, what it's like. What is going on in that head? Though? I don't know. That's why they have to reach out so we can ask them. See, I would argue. I know you would. <laughs> <laughs> right but like there's a possibility that, that there's something other than what we experience of course there's a possibility of yeah. some but even that is still a conversation right even if they're choose, it's just looks different it so, does, but what does it look like exactly there's a right? level of communication taking place with that person inside of their head it just isn't the running dialogue that most of us are accustomed to some people like don't see like they, they're not hearing it. Some people see words, mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. the words instead of like visuals. Some people see colors mm -hmm. with that. I mean, there's so many different ways. And then apparently some people, some people get some quiet time in their head. And I'm like, what is that like? What is that like? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we'll have to ask somebody. We, we do the things. How do you, how does that conversation take place in your head? Okay. Not what I is need, that conversation? I need Hold more on. tools. Hold on. To make sound. That's and we, a show. 45 minutes later, we'll get to the actual podcast episode, okay? Okay. Keep this really brief. It's just okay. a question about like, do you hear words? Do you see words? Oh, Are that's you all? Imagery, okay. like colors. How, how do you, Okay. how does that internal dialogue take place I, inside of your head? I have audio. I hear words mm -hmm. and I visual, I see scenes. So mine is very, very loud. And very like picture barn bombarding esque. I don't know. It's a lot. And then many, many times it's multiple. It feels like there's so many conversations happening at once. It's like when you're in a crowded room mm -hmm. and the room just like roars. It has that like because all of them, it's that. And so sometimes it's mine, sometimes it's not. But the, it's just loud. It is loud and it is. The pictures are so intense. I'm very often in other places. Isn't it weird that there's oh, yeah. like a, <laughs> trauma? Isn't there weird that there's an auditory aspect to it? Is um because you're I hearing. So. I'm literally hearing. Right. Yes. It seems very strange. Yes. Because you're not hearing it through no. your actual ears. No. And when that does happen, <laughs> like that's happened a few times, but that's an energetic thing. But when somebody comes in and says something. When you are just like in the conversation. I, so as soon as they come be... back online, then you're like, ah, where did you come from? It like surprises you or snaps uh -huh. you into reality. And you're like, hold on. How did I get here? Because I was just having someplace. a conversation elsewhere. I was someplace else. I think that's how mine, the majority of mine is as well. Is it the same? Where it's auditory. Like I'm not seeing a, you know, I'm not seeing text written out. I'm not reading in my head. Do you get movies? Like pictures? Yeah, like I mean, it's it's very much visual, Yeah, right? Where like 
like I can imagine last night, what I did last night, right? I went to jujitsu last night. So as I'm bringing forth that memory in my head, I can visually go into that space and I'm hearing the sounds there and the conversations that took place. Mm -hmm. I'm also hearing the thoughts that were in my head at the time when I was there. Yeah. Right. Anyways, that's not what this episode is about. Well, I have one more that I want to add to this that it's not about. (laughs) I don't remember in smells, but smells trigger intensely the visuals and the audio. I'm not funny. Mm -hmm. Like it's not, I'm not like smelling in my head, but I have, um, I can smell something and then I am on another planet. Okay. Okay. Okay, what are we talking about? We're talking talking about about communication. communication. So you have this ongoing communication that's taking place inside your mind in some way all the time. All, well, yes. And then we also have to communicate verbally with the other people in our life, right? Whether that's relationships, whether that's just the cashier at the grocery store. Mm -hmm. So. It's not always verbally. Yeah, well, we're going to get to that point. I'm, I'm getting... Stop communicating right now. Hold on. Okay. What I want to talk about. Yes. First and foremost is is how we take it for granted. Okay. Because it is actually a skill. It Mm -hmm. is something that uh, we're not really taught, right? We think we're taught to communicate because we're taught to speak or we're taught to write and we're taught to read. Those Mm -hmm. are an aspect of communication. There's sign. There's like a whole bunch of Yeah, of course. Yeah. But those are all just pieces and parts. But the actual true ability to communicate involves so much more than that, right? Okay, yeah. So we take it for granted, which means you're probably really shitty at communication, just like everybody else. That's probably the case. (laughs) The vast majority of people suck at communication because we're too busy trying to communicate our own thoughts and or experiences. Mm -hmm rather than actually taking in information and listening to people. Mm -hmm. So the biggest part of, like if right now, if you have to hurry up and go and you're hoping to come back to this podcast later and you want one key thing to like, big part of communication is listening. Listen, listen, listen. Okay. The other big thing, because we're going to get into a couple of like hiccups that happen in relationships and really just in communication in general. I want to add to your listening. Go ahead. Listen to hear, not listen to share. Just like really, you're just hearing, listening, yeah. not waiting for your turn to speak or something to say in reference to. It doesn't make great conversation for a podcast, but in lieu of talking on a podcast, just listen to hear. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The other thing before we get into it, well, we're already into it. I don't. Oh, why do you keep saying that? I don't it's going to be at the end. We're like, okay, we're into it. Podcast over. Right. <laughs> We're about to get into this you, topic. We're before still before we get into this topic. After these messages, so another big component of communication that we take for granted mm-hmm. is the nonverbal communication that we're all really, really, really good at. And I would argue, and I don't even need to argue this. Like I will stand on this. What is it when you take a stance? You will. <laughs> Like, I'll take the stance. I will take the stance. What is it? Like, I will die on this mountain? Yeah, I will die on this hill, right? Will you? No. Is this where your stance is? Definitely not. Ooh. 90% of all communication is nonverbal. Is that a a real number? That I just made up. Okay. Just checking. I feel really strongly about it. Okay. Where we are. So on your one to 10 scale, that's a nine. Here we are. Am I doing it right? Yes. God. Jeez. Louise. (laughs) Wait. Is 10 positive? Yeah, 10 positive for your... Okay. We have confused everybody. If we would have just left it at 90%, then that makes sense. If we would have left it at your, your made-up number? At your bizarre land, <laughs> negative 10 to 0. If that is actually not a bizarre thing. That is a method. Anyways, continue. You're right. You're not bizarre. <laughs> you just have some quirks that are bizarre. <laughs> nonverbal. And the reason why we're so really, really, really good at nonverbal communication as well as like interpreting information Mm nonverbally is because it's the instinctual animal part of us because we couldn't talk for a really long time. Okay. Like all throughout, like actual ability to speak Mm -hmm. is pretty new to humans. We have way more time as an animal 
without the ability to communicate and articulate our thoughts with our mouths. Okay. So we got really, 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 really good at interpreting our surroundings and watching body language and movement and also sensory picking up of the energy in the space that we are in. So okay. that is like our default way of communicating as well as interpreting the world around us is our ability to look, feel, sense, understand what the other person is going through and or thinking and or feeling. Mm -hmm. And it's all survival based. Yeah. It doesn't really serve anymore either. It totally um, does. I don't think so. I think it does. I, okay. We'll, get, we'll keep getting into this. But the thing that we have to recognize mm -hmm. is the importance of communicating on top of that thing, okay. right? Because there's so many times where I can pick up on what you're feeling. Like we had this the other night where you were having that argument in your head with me, right? Mm -hmm. You were all sorts of worked up and pissed off over something and all of it was taking place inside of your head mm -hmm. in that internal dialogue mm -hmm. and you weren't verbally explaining any of this. And I knew good and goddamn well that you were mad at me okay. and that you were pissed off at me for mm -hmm. something. I didn't know what. Mm -hmm. I just knew that you were pissed off at me. Now, how did I pick up on that? Keep in mind, just to give people context, I had taken a nap for a portion of this time period. So I was asleep. And then the other- That's not what it made me mad either. And then the everyone. other part of this moment, my back was turned to you because I was like sitting in the chair and you were in the kitchen. So I wasn't even like watching you. Mm -hmm. But somehow I was able to pick up on and sense that you were mad at me. Yeah, because you were, and that goes to my point of why it's not always beneficial because it wasn't a conversation I was stepping into at that point. I was being hyper vigilant. And like emotionally monitoring <laughs> those doesn't didn't serve that purpose. When it came time to talk, there was that. But I was like, whatever I was going, th I don't, I don't know. I don't feel maybe a time and a place, right? I think there's a time and a place, and I think that communication is where it's at. Because honestly, when you're looking at the fact that you could pick up that I was angry and how that was beneficial, it wasn't. What would have been beneficial is if I would have been able to communicate that to you instead of feeling all of that. But also the dialogue in my brain of where I was doing it was you were um, making it a point to show me how... Um, It was, it was, it was, it was a crazy time. How, what it felt like is like you were making it a point to, for me to know that I was not important to you, that there wasn't like the thing that I thought we had agreed on wasn't happening, that I didn't matter, that I was being very invalidated. You were going out of your way. I felt to make me feel like crap and to like, kind of like there wasn't space for me. It was just this really unhealthy dynamic. I totally went into shadow. I totally went into old patterns and behaviors. I was not communicating what I was feeling and I was interpreting your actions as validating my negative association with the experience. So every action that you were doing was fitting my narrative of the unhealthy things that was happening. So all of that served no healthy purpose you weren't communicating i just from your like i know she's mad at me <laughs> i wasn't communicating and honestly most of that one fell on me because yes like in my head like for the numbers 99 percent of that shit fell on you in the moment i was like this are you kidding me i was i went from being like hurt to so mad and then just like trying to like narrow it down like I I was already on the down cycle of calming myself and realizing okay like this isn't it we just need to have a conversation I need a little bit more space so I was already calming myself and getting rational and you I never communicated that I was upset so I had the whole climb I had the peak 
and I had the like coming down to send before I was able to start communicating. So that's why like, that's not. And then your body language was telling me all of this. Your words would have been very different. My body language was telling you she's upset. (laughs) So you kept saying, um, I, I wasn't communicating. So I was having this experience yeah. and I was thinking all of these things. And I was feeling all of these things, but I wasn't communicating yes. any Sorry. of it. Uh-huh. You weren't communicating verbally. Right. But you were communicating an immense amount of information that I picked up on. Yes. Which is what I want to highlight. Okay. I'm not, I'm not denying that. I'm, de- I'm saying that this isn't, I was, I was arguing the fact of that not being healthy. Yes. That's not being beneficial. That I was not adding to our relationship in a positive way <laughs> in that moment. That's what I'm trying to highlight. Yeah. I was non-verbally shitting all over the place. But that's a level of communication. It is a level of communication. So that's what I want to highlight is we have to, I think that's where it's really important to shift the conversation around okay. communication. Okay. Is there's a lot of it taking place where no talking is happening. Yes. And you have to acknowledge that that's an aspect of communication. And it is like you just displayed and talked about, right? There's Mm -hmm. times where it's not beneficial and it's unhealthy. Mm -hmm. And then there's plenty of times where that's a really important skill to have. The ability to both communicate that information Mm non-verbally as well as pick up that information non-verbally. Like I've told this story on the podcast before. I see that. Where I was in San Francisco and I was staying in a really shitty part of San Francisco, like Mm -hmm. down in the Mission District where it's just crime ridden and it's a terrible place. And I felt like I was being bombarded by everybody when I was out walking the streets where everybody was trying to sell me drugs or trying to do like it was just very uncomfortable for me. Mm -hmm. And then I changed my energy in a sense. I just remembered, oh, wait a minute, because I used to be a police officer, I have the ability to kind of walk around and move with a much different kind of uh, just a different energy. Right. We all know what cops feel like. (laughs) (laughs) I don't have to explain it. You know what Mm -hmm. cops feel like. And so I just shifted into that mindset again and into that energy. Nobody bothered me. Suddenly people were, you know, people were looking Mm -hmm. away when I walked by, like nobody bothered me at all. So that was my like awareness of this nonverbal communication that Mm -hmm. I have the ability to then in that moment tap into and use, right? Maybe we need a clarifier here. Are we talking about like, I guess... I'm like, that's very valuable in those circumstances, but that's not valuable in a partnership. That's not valuable in like, in like a relationship dynamic, in a home environment, in an office environment. That's not valuable in the relationship with the, with the example that I just gave, but what is valuable, I'm going to display some nonverbal communication right now. That's really valuable. Okay. I know I'm surprising. I see that face a lot. <laughs> it's not surprising. It's active. Like I'm, okay. oh, like I'm actively involved in listening. Oh. I'm using my body without using my words yeah. to say, oh, like I'm, like you can't see this if you're only listening. Obviously, I don't think your face is coming. <laughs> I'm activated right now. Are you? Yeah. Come on, babe. What's up? Well, we were just talking about like I'm feeling really shitty for like. That way, one experience? Yeah. That was just an example for I, the podcast. I know, but it's real. You know? Yeah. Like, I, so I'm feeling, like, crappy for it. And um, like it's it's really hard because, like, we have all this practice. And it's like, maybe you can cut yourself some slack. I can cut myself some slack here, too. But like, we have all this practice. We have all of this information. And we still fall into that. Like, in my, in that moment, I was activated I was like full frontal brain taking, I'm excuse me, full frontal brain was like nowhere to be found. I was total limbic system. I was like in like survival responses, even though nothing was a threat. But for me, like abandonment was coming up, loss of love, loss of security, loss of really all of these things sort of like things that were being triggered for me. So I didn't even recognize that I was like, I knew I was activated, but I didn't have the ability in that time. It's like you say, healing is done retrospectively, but I didn't have the ability in that time to realize that that's what I was doing, that, that I had another choice. In that moment, I wasn't able to find 
one of the gazillion tools that I have. It was just like, it was fact. And also I didn't feel like you were like from, from the space that you were in, I didn't feel like I could go to you because there was also like another aspect that we're not touching on. That was like, I didn't feel like you were also available for a conversation. So, so many things happened and it's like, it still happens and it was intense. And like, so I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it because we're talking about it. And it's like, it makes me like, it's totally like, I, I know that it's just a moment, but it was a big deal because I was like, I, what it stemmed from is I was really, really hurt. I was really, really sad and like hearing th- what you're describing, like that's a toxic environment, <laughs> your experience, you experience toxicity. And that means I, I mean, it's not like it means from what you said, but like the fact is I delivered a toxic environment in that way. My body language, my nonverbal communication was full shadow. And that sucks. (laughs) So sitting with that, I'm just like, oh, man, I don't ever want to communicate to you that way. Like, and, and it's really hard to not start playing the shame game. You know, I know better. I have better skills. I like, I know better than that. That is, there is no reason for me to behave that way. And like all that shame and be like, okay, you do know better, but you couldn't do better in the moment or else you would have. So what can you, like, what are other triggers? Like whatever, there's just deeper conversations to have because what it stemmed from was just like a, me, a miscommunication when we were verbally speaking, I had an understanding. I thought we were on the same page. You had an understanding, thought we were on the same page, and we were not on the same page. The hurt came up, shadow took over, and I'm like, damn it. Damn it, damn it, damn it. So I'm, I'm feeling it right now in this communication, and I'm also like almost in it again with a confirmation biasm. That I was able to use your phrase instead of mine, selective evidence gathering. That everything you say here, I'm just going to find a way to say, no, that's unhealthy. No, that's unhealthy because I will not give myself a pass for that. Like there's no way that that is okay. I just need to. And I'm like, so I'm like, I'm on a shame train right now. Choo-choo, babe. Right? So I'm trying to figure out how to like. (laughs) Well, what would you like to do in this moment? Because we can totally go into it. Well, I'm going to keep going with the conversation. I'm just like having that awareness of right now of like I'm in that triggered moment. Yeah. I'm feeling it. My, I'm having a hard time like really exhaling. I'm, I'm full. My belly is just like twisting in knots. I feel my shoulders up to my ears. My jaw is tight. I'm nervous. I'm like so scared right now. And it's just becoming more. So I'm in it. I can just take a moment. I would smell, right, to bring the air in. I don't have room. I'm speaking, and I'm still so full of air somehow, so I just really (sighs) let me exhale. Because the truth of the matter is, right now I'm safe. Right now you're safe. There is nothing other than we're sitting here recording a podcast. Reality is there's tea in front of me, and we are hydrated, and we're fed, and we're warm, and we're safe, and, like, we are not, like, the truth of it right now, everything is okay. The truth of it is I behaved in a way that I regret and that I I don't want to repeat. The truth is that's something for me to look at. The truth is (sighs) there's deeper conversations that I think maybe we should have because that amount of like hurt that I felt came from more things than just like that moment so there were things that I need to figure out how to communicate to bring up and I don't like we are privileged to be able to communicate audibly and verbally we have we have that skill and my nonverbal ways sometimes I can't break out of For other reasons, I get really like trauma scared and all of that coming up. 
but I want to continue to practice. I want to show up like in this moment. So I'm triggered and I'm scared. (laughs) And I just like, I'm like, I'm feeling the shame. (laughs) Like it's a blanket on me right now. And I'm just like, oh. And shame isn't about you. Shame is still making it about me. So even with the shame, I'm not addressing the fact that this is how I made you feel. I'm like, you're still doing it, Steph. So let's address the fact of how you felt when I was, in my brain, closing off the environment. In my brain, all of the nonverbal communication that was happening for me was so loud of disgust and disdain and all of those things. And just completely like me having no value for you. Like I had headphones on, which probably helped with the loudness because I couldn't hear what, how loud I was being because I was trying to drown out how loud I was feeling and thinking. And it just like created this environment where you're sitting there like, <laughs> I don't really know what I did, but this is, this is going to be a big one. <laughs> like all the fear that's coming up in you. Because you also have abandonment issues. You also have like that fear of like, like what's coming up for you and you did something wrong and you're in trouble and you're going to lose the love. And so I would just perpetuated that unsafety in you. I didn't know. Is that what you did though? I feel like it would. So why don't you tell me what I did? Perfect. Right. Yeah. Why don't you tell me what you So felt? here's real awareness of like, first and foremost, thank you for expressing all of those things. Yeah. Like I, I totally agree that there's more there, right? That we need to discuss. It's a big, big wound. <laughs> because you were super activated in the moment and all of these kind of different things. And I think there's also some shadow there in your inability to like forgive yourself, right? That whole thing of like, oh my gosh, I, you know, I can't give myself, I can't cut myself slack in this moment because I can never be the cause of toxic environments. I can never create that for the people, right? Sometimes you are. Mm -hmm. That's just human nature. Sometimes we're going to be the mistake and we're going to be the problem and that's okay like we're still not just worthy of love but we mm-hmm. are loved still yeah we're still innocent we're still pure regardless of the mistakes that we make mm. there's just the consequences yeah for those you know cause and effect my experience mm-hmm. was not one of fear good my experience was not one of like i was curious was I on edge? Yes. In the sense of like, man, I'm sure she's upset for me, you know, about something. But at the same time, I I mean, specifically on this day, this is how I felt where it's not always this. There's plenty of times where it's the opposite of this. But at this point, I was like, whatever it is, it's okay. like, who knows what's going on or why you're upset with me? Because mm-hmm. I hadn't really done much. From my perspective, right? Yeah. I was... <laughs> totally from my perspective. Uh-huh. And so I'm like, whatever it is, we'll just deal with it, whatever. Because eventually you're going to talk about it or you're not. So like a lot of what I have been working on and I worked on that day was not letting your mood alter my mood. Not allowing whatever it is that you're going through affect what I'm going through. Or how I'm feeling, right? Mm -hmm. Is really just that like acknowledgement of like, if you're going through an experience and if you're feeling something, I don't need to suddenly change how I'm feeling if I'm having whatever whatever mood I'm in, right? If I'm Mm -hmm. sad and you're happy, I don't need to suddenly pretend like I'm happy. If I'm happy and you're sad, I don't need to suddenly pretend like I'm sad. Or if you're angry, I don't need to suddenly pretend like I did something wrong and what's the, you know. Yes, 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 yes. I don't need to do any of those things. So I was practicing that that day. You did so good. You know, but at the same time. I just like want to acknowledge you. Like that's hard work. That's really hard. Yeah. And you were in it and you were doing that. That's a big deal. And I'm really proud of you. What I'm highlighting here is your perception of what that experience was Mm -hmm. is all about you. It's Mm -hmm. all about your experience. Like this fear and the shame that you feel for creating this environment Mm -hmm. is directly correlated to those environments that you had to survive. Yeah. Because that was not my environment in that moment. Yeah. Well, that's good. So 
you don't need to feel bad. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can, obviously. You can choose to continue to process and feel those things. And there's healing there and the shadow in there and all those kind of things. But my experience, very, very different. Very different. I think um, that really, really, like I'm really grateful that you were able to put that into words and express your experience and share that with me. I think that's really cool. Yeah. It's really cool. I like, um, like that's one of the things that I really, I like that we can do that, that we can, like that, we'll throw this into the communication thing, is that we, both of our experiences, vastly different, are both true and valid. Like my experience was this, this was what like in my brain and you're like, okay, my experience. And it doesn't mean that what I experienced is different than what you. It's just like, okay, that was how you experienced it. And this is how I experienced it. Exactly. And the calmness and the, um, like the calm waters that comes with that, without having to make the other person see it the other person's way is a big deal. And then in the calmness comes clarity. And like, I'm having some clarity in the moment, like I'm still upset. Um, and it wasn't, this wasn't just like a Saturday afternoon of what the fuck just happened to them. Like we were like, not like, I'm not sharing this part, but like we were also in the middle of it, of something that I'm trying to find calmness and peace and safety in that is not calm or safe for me. And that comes with, um, a long history of fear. So I was like, that was what was, so it was like the, the environment was primed and. It's exactly shadow work. It was like, it was, and it doesn't, exactly what happens in relationships. Right. Yeah. It's what we talk about all the time. And it doesn't mean that you knock it out of the park every time. If that was the case, we wouldn't need to be talking about it. Well, <laughs> You'd our, be fine. Our batting average is super right? low. <laughs> and it was it was bad. So like there's like more work to be done here. There's more communication and like just having like some real awareness here of this not being able to like the shame that I'm feeling and holding on and feeling like I need to like punish myself. Like there's an aspect of it that is like there's so there's projection that happens in shadow work and then there's like that like that projection and that reflection that kind of comes back and forth and like I can't like I'm still upset like with you so I'm not letting that go and taking that and just boom boom like attacking myself with it and shaming myself with it and then like it comes to like what like, why are you still holding on to this? Like you, like, it's all clear. There's nothing like it's, and so much of it isn't even you, you know, it's all of this like past that now is here and it's the projection again. So it's like, I'm like in a prism of shame, <laughs> shit, shame and blame. Like it's you, it's me, it's you, it's me. Like this one is such a big, it's a big, big, big wound for me. And I don't like know how to deal with it all right now. I, mean, I know how I want to deal with it. I want to take it off the table. We don't have to deal with it. It's done. Boom, boom, off, out of sight, out of mind. We're done. I don't have to be re-triggered. I don't Back have to deal shadow. with it. And it's gone. And then there's a part of like, there's things that that should absolutely happen with. There are things that you do not need to re-experience. There are things. This does not meet that criteria. <laughs> this is like where you go into the bubble and just don't want anything that's going to trigger. Like this is supposed to be about communication, not about triggers, but this is where we're at because this is how it really came up. So opposing from what I want, which is to just not have to deal with it and make it magically disappear. And that whole, um, that whole phrase, that avoidant, that just like, if I just avoid it long enough, it'll go away. That doesn't really work, (laughs) you know? Then I have to look at this and I don't want to. Like the reality is, do we need to? Are we going to? Yes. Do I want to? Am I excited to? No, I don't want to. I don't want to have to look at it. I don't want to have these hard conversations. I don't want to be have to say, this is how I'm feeling. I'm feeling bad, scared, afraid, hurt, unloved, unsafe. And I'm feeling like the environment is weakening 
and it's affecting, like, I'm afraid it's going to affect our relationship. I'm afraid it's going, like, it just affects everybody in our house. And there's, you know, I just, I don't want to have that hard conversation. And I don't trust that reaction right now because I'm recognizing my reaction to it. Just how activated you are. Yeah. I'm not coming from a place of actually this isn't I like I'm not setting a boundary with discernment. I'm I'm reaction. I'm like having this reaction all over you. And the funny thing is is like I'm not really having it all over you. <laughs> you know, I had it that day. It built up into this thing that wasn't even really about that. It was just here's this release, this target, this trigger, this release that spun up to here. But then when we get to the core of it, I'm like, oh, it's actually these wounds. <sighs> and it's going to take some time for us to go through because like it's one of those things where I don't know where to start. And the truth is, what do you like? You also can look at that and be like, what do you mean you don't know where to start? Did you just hear that whole conversation you started? Like we're in it. We're having these conversations. The dialogue's opened up and it's hard and we're going to stick with it. So there's, I guess, a benefit of nonverbal communication. You're, when you're, <laughs> you uh, are really saying a lot. Without saying anything. Right. And now I have that like awkward coming back down. I was really vulnerable. Right. And I'm like, ooh. Well, take some deep breaths the best that you can. Yeah. Breathe your tea in. Breathe. It smells right. so good. Smell I like your this tea. tea. Keep smelling your tea. Then I'm like, don't tell me what to do. <laughs> I'm the boss of me. <laughs> you know, if people ever wonder, like, the shit that we talk about, like, it comes from practice in our lived right? experience. And we're still practicing it all the time. All the time. Yeah, it's something that is just this ongoing work mm -hmm. that we continually strive for and work towards. And and we have, like, like the 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 we have an endless supply of opportunity to practice. Right. <laughs> it's not something that we're ever going to have to be like, gosh, you know, we just don't really have anything else to work on. We've right. done a really We've good done job. It. If only there was something else that we could work on. We have an endless supply. Yeah. Endless. There's never going to be something that, you know, that's not some area of our life that we have to worry about. It's always going to be there. We're always going to have something. So the, and when that feels like heavy, like the cool thing is, is that we can talk about this. Like we went through a thing that lasted that day and now we have conversations to talk about. We haven't been punishing each other. We haven't been like our whole, everything hasn't created chaos. We haven't been in this days long or weeks long or sometimes month long fight, which is what that would have been. It would have been just like the spun out into this total chaos is like now when these things happen and Sometimes I'm bringing the shit. Sometimes you're bringing the shit. Lots of times we're both bringing the shit. It's a moment that we work through in healthier ways. Are there still healthier ways to work through it? Of course. We're, we're still practicing. We're still getting better. But there is like benefit from the dedication of the work that we've been yeah. doing. There's still benefit from the dedication and the commitment to each other where we have shown up. And, and that's not just like the, I guess, you know, I say to each other, but honestly, I think most of it comes from the dedication and the way that we've shown up for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Because without our self-work, doing it for ourselves, like we haven't, when you just show up for the other, sometimes it takes that to start. But if you're only showing up for the other person, like what happens when that changes? What happens when that goes away? What happens if... It doesn't really pan out. When you show up for the other person, you're showing up with an expectation. Yes. And what happens when that expectation isn't met? You're not going to show up anymore. Right. You're gonna if I'm showing up just blame. for you, mm -hmm. then the expectation is oftentimes because then you're going to forgive me, you're going to love me, you're going to stay, right? I'm going mm -hmm. to receive something for, from you yeah. by showing up in, in this way for you. I'm only going to be better if you give me this. Yeah. So the expectation is never met. Yeah. Like it's never met. And that's unfair for the other person. It's totally unfair. So unfair. Yeah, it's totally unfair for everybody. Right. So it then has to become, like you said, right, you have to show up for yourself first. Yeah. And the expectation is because I fucking am worth it. I'm worth it. And like that's all that is yeah. needed, right? Yeah. I don't need any other reason other than like my favorite thing is when our kids would ask, like, why? You know, you tell them no for some, why, why? Because I said so. Like, 
why do you need to show up for yourself first? Because you're worth it. Because you're like worth that's it. the only answer that you need. Because you're worth it. That's why. I, and then there's a bunch of other reasons, but the first and foremost is because you're worth it. That's why you want to show up for yourself first. Like, yeah. So something else spark or what? Well, it does. It does. It does spark. Um, I'm going to continue to work on myself regardless of who's in my life. Exactly. Regardless. I'm going to, like, I am always going to strive now um, and work. And and luckily, it's a lifelong project. As we said, I'm endless <laughs> supply of shit that I need to work on and right? that I am working on and that shit that I haven't even, like, had to come into awareness yet because I haven't healed to that level of where now that's surfacing. And I'm like, oh, good. I get a look at that. I'm going to do that regardless. Regardless, that is a commitment that I've made to myself. That is a non-negotiable for myself. I am in this for life for me. And that doesn't, like, there's consequences for your actions. There's, you know, the good consequences that, or the consequences you want and the consequences you don't want. But there's consequences for your choices. It is, it's not, it's a motivator, but it's not a reason like it's a good motivator. The consequences are my relationships with you, with kids are improving. My ability to hold healthier relationships with others are improving. My ability to discern what is not healthy and my space is improving. Being able to show up better for our kids in a healthier way to be like a, a more stable, reliable, safe, secure parent. That is a huge benefit and motivator. And like, I'm so grateful they're in our lives, but I'm not hanging that on their heads of like, I'm doing this for you. And if you aren't here, then why would I do this? No, I'm going to do this. I'm going to show up. I'm going to do this work com- like continuously. And if that fits in your space and you are allowing me in your space, great, but I'm going to continue to do that. And if you need a break, if you need to be out of my space, then you get that too. And I'm going to honor you, but I'm still going to keep doing the work. And one day you may want to come back and be like, <laughs> I want to see, I want to, see, you know, however, that, and maybe you won't, I don't know, but I'm going to do that. Like that's a commitment. This touches upon that thing where, cause this is so common where people will get to a certain point in their healing where they will pride themselves on doing it for their kids or mm-hmm. for their partner, where that is their drive. The only reason I get out of bed every day. The only reason I'm staying sober, right? It's a day at a time and I'm doing it for my kids. That doesn't feel good for anybody. Well, it just places the actual responsibility. On your kids. On external. On other people. On, yeah. And there's nothing, like we're not judging this. This happens all the time in like the healing journey and the process and the growth and the Mm -hmm. evolution and everything. It's totally normal. I've done it. I've done it. Right. That was like a big, huge reason why I decided to go on this fucking walkabout that we're on was originally for our kids. For our right? kids. Yeah. And I put that weight on them. The awareness then becomes oh, wait a minute. <clears throat> if I sit and look at why this is just for me and for nobody else. And like you said, there's benefits. There's benefits, yeah. Right. Absolutely. There's definitely cause and effect, and there's mm-hmm. benefits to it that are amazing. And I'm there's really happy about those benefits. But if I just center it on myself and I can be okay with that, then you alleviate that pressure that you subconsciously are placing upon other people. Also, you really have to be responsible. Like there's a level of responsibility that you aren't taking by placing it on other people. Mm -hmm. You're avoiding the actual real responsibility that it's not up to your kids. It's not up to your partner. It's up to you and you alone. And when you place that responsibility elsewhere, you're avoiding like the real core of, Mm -hmm. are you actually worth it just for yourself? Are you actually worth showing up for every day to heal all of these things that have happened to you? And if your answer is no, then you need to look at it. If your answer is, I'm not worth it, but I'm going to do it for X, Y, or Z, 
there's a level of healing that like you're going to cap out at. And there's no judgment. There's totally fine to do that. But there is a level that you're going to cap out at. And you're not going to be able to get past that point until you actually are able to take the full responsibility upon yourself. Because it is all up to you. And it has nothing to do with other people. Because like you said, they'll come and they'll go. Whether it's your partners, whether it's your kids, whatever it is. Yeah. And at the end of the day, like it has to be up to you. You're worth it just as you are. You That's are. why you should start healing. And like I want to add to that too. We're like talking about communication. We are way. talking about communication. We're going to keep going on right. responsibility. When we get to it in this episode. All right. <laughs> the responsibility too of like really like honing in on you taking it for yourself and how that's not being responsible. You're putting the responsibility on others. And just another way to like really hone in and look at it is the responsibility that you don't take as a parent, your children will. And I know hear that out. That's so good. It's, it's so hard too. So when you're like, I'm not accountable for this, I'm not your child, then it's like, I'm accountable, which translates into it's my fault. It's my fault. So the responsibility that you don't take now your kids are perceiving as their fault. They weren't able to be good enough to love you and for, for you to work on yourself, to stop drinking, to not be abusive, to like not create a toxic environment, to be happy, to get up off the couch, to like live a full life. All of these things, they then become the fault in their mind. And then that perpetuates and that continues. So if you're feeling like that, unable to take that, chances are if you don't think you are worth it, it's because you got that message as a kid somehow, whether it's through neglect or There's straight hundred percent certainty that that's where right. It came from. <laughs> and it's like in crappy childhoods don't always look like abuse. They don't always look like living with an addict. It can be an emotionally unavailable parent. It can be a parent that didn't know how to meet these needs. I think we just still... need to expand what abuse actually right? is. Right, and it's not like there's. There's intentional abuse, which is what we always think. And then there's like um, without intention. Doesn't mean that. Unintentional. It, yeah, but I'm trying to think. I had a word. I had a phrase that I used for it before another podcast. Maybe somebody can tell me what that was. <laughs> but it's just like where if you have this, like I'm looking at you and I'm going to take it all out on you. I'm going to let you know that I have the power. You are going to be my outlet of abuse and I'm going to attack you in many different ways. I'm going to do these things. And then you have the, I can't show up. Like I'm unavailable. You don't have a parent that is nurturing or able to communicate or hear your needs or recognize that you have needs or not be annoyed by your needs. And it's not because they are intentionally putting this on you. It's whatever going on in their space. It's got them so overwhelmed to a point of where they're not able to. So there's so many different ways here. And we really get like caught up on that without looking at the truth of the matter is, is that did you have a need that wasn't met? Do you have a need that, like, how was that need met? What did you get and what did you want as a child? And I'm not talking about the new toy or the new game. You know what I'm talking about. And so when those things aren't, when responsibility isn't taken by the parent, it will be again by the child, which equals the fault. So it just loops back around. I heard this phrase recently where because of the way that like we develop in utero and then we eventually are born, obviously we're not fully developed, especially when it comes to our brain. So we don't have the capacity to like walk, like, you know, a lot of animals, the baby's born and immediately it's up and walking yeah. and it's able to kind of follow mom around. Right. Right. As humans, we don't have that. Mm -hmm. Our brain develops on the outside of the, not on the outside of our body, but it develops after we're born completely. Our brain is not fully developed when we're born. Right. Mm -hmm. it takes 20 plus years to fully develop. Right. And because of that, we are instinctually reliant upon our main caregivers mm -hmm. for love and safety, right? That's, a, that's an instinctual thing that we need in order to survive mm -hmm. because if we just drop and plop on the ground, we're fucked, right? Yeah, that's it. So we have to have that bond and we have to mm -hmm. have that connection and we have to have that love instinctually in order to survive. And if that doesn't happen then you have a core wound when it comes mm -hmm. to your survival. Like there is always going to be a part of you 
that is um, in fight or flight mm -hmm. because subconsciously you don't have that core necessity that was met, that instinctual mm -hmm. thing that you actually have to have in order to feel like fully present and grounded in your body and in life and safe and secure and all those kind of different things. And for the vast majority of people, I dare say 99%, mm -hmm. they didn't have that. Right. Our parents lacked in some way when it came to giving us that secure uh, environment mm -hmm. for in order for us to attach properly and connect and be loved and supported and allow for our growth to fully heal and develop. Mm -hmm. And all of those things obviously very rarely happen. And it's free from judgment, right? There's no mm -hmm. judgment about it. It's just the recognition of, oh, that's how I was made. That's, that's kind of the makeup mm -hmm. of me. And so I'm always going to have these wounds, which is probably why I don't think I'm worth it. Yeah. Which is probably why you try to externalize that and put it on somebody else mm -hmm. because you don't have the capacity to actually show up and take responsibility for your own actions and your own decisions. And it's really hard to do that. Mm -hmm. Like it's really hard actually to be the one that, you know, like nobody else is forcing you to get out of bed and heal. Nobody else mm -hmm. is forcing you to look at your stuff. Nobody else is forcing you to stop drinking or stop taking drugs. Nobody else can force you to do any of those things. We all know that, right? So at the end of the day, it's only up to you. Mm -hmm. That's it. It's up to you. And if you get to that point where you're placing the responsibility for you being clean, sober, and or healthy on somebody externally from you, something to look at. Something to look at. Yeah. Holy beautiful conversation, mm -hmm. um, Batgirl. <laughs> I was going to say Batman. <laughs> so back to communication. Right. And how important that is. Like if right. you can't communicate these needs, if you don't even have the dialogue for your own brain with all the chatter that you have going on to be able to identify you know it, what? to understand what's happening, we're not how even, can you uh, articulate it? This, we're going to leave this as, we'll do the things that we wanted to talk about next week. I think we still talked about them. We well, can just elaborate more. There's without. not. There's like the three <laughs> topics that come up in communication and how they affect your relationships. And we're going to get to that next week because yeah. this was too much not too much in the sense of this was just beautiful. This was a lot of Steph information heard that she was once again, too much right? <laughs> no. core wound activated <laughs> shadow coming up to defend Hello. anger. <laughs> Guess we'll talk about that one next week. <laughs> what I mean, you know what I, I mean, know what you mean, right? This was just really beautiful. Yeah. And I'm glad that we went into this uh, space because First and foremost for you and for us, right? For you and me um, and the reflection of the deeper stuff that's coming up from that experience over the past weekend. And then also, like we really highlighted a lot of the importance of nonverbal communication in the positive and negative ways. And it's like everything else where there is no positive or negative. They just exist. They exist. And it's how you view them. Are you looking at the things through a positive lens or are you looking at them through a negative lens? The reality is nonverbal communication just is, and how do you see it, right? There's times when you might view it as beneficial and times when you might view it as not beneficial, but super important, and we're so good at it. Like if you think you suck at nonverbal communication, I guarantee you're like hyper aware and constantly scanning your surroundings and pick up even the subtlest of cues when people shift their weight or drop the left side of their mouth or they breathe in differently and suddenly you're like something's wrong with that person did you see the way that their left nostril just flared i know that they're upset <laughs> so nonverbal communication is very important okay should we transition now babe is there anything else before we answer this week's episodes oh question? i have so much i keep wanting to riff on everything Wow. <laughs> got a frog okay, in your I totally too. have a frog in my throat. Stop you're embarrassing me. Mm -hmm. You're talking to me or to the frog. I'm talking to the frog. You have to speak frog then. Ribbit, 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 I, I, ribbit. It just keeps happening. Ribbit, 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 okay. ribbit. I'm good to transition. Like there's all the caveats, but. Okay. So every episode we answer somebody's question. You can email those questions to info at energyislove.love. Yeah. You can submit them via social media. If you follow <laughs> us on Facebook, Instagram, or TikTok. You can just message us those questions. Uh, it doesn't really matter how you get them to us. If you have pigeons, um, you can send them via pigeons. If you're a fan of Game of Thrones, crows will work as well. 
or if you are um, currently at Hogwarts and you want to send an owl, let us know and we will get that message. Did I touch upon all the different ways that they can get those messages to us, those questions? I feel like that's enough. That's That'll get you started. Okay. <clears throat> also, if you just see us and you want to ask us a question, uh, that's fine too. So if you run into us. Okay, so this week's question is, I freeze whenever it comes to making a decision. It doesn't matter if it's a big decision or a little one, and it's driving my partner crazy. What can I do? Indecisive. Right. And the trap. It's a trap. It is. The inability to make decisions Analysis is what, Steph? Analysis paralysis. It's hell. It's a trauma response. It is. It sucks. Right. It feels so shitty. Like, first, like, to be... <laughs> okay. like having so much compassion for that as somebody who also struggles with making decisions and like it, it can feel it's just completely debilitating you feel like there is so much writing on it and you have to like it's like it feels like what it feels like is there are like a million ways to get it wrong which is catastrophic and only one way to get it right. Like that, those are, those are impossible. Like how, how impossible. are you supposed to make a decision with that? And so your body is going through that. And like, in the meantime, your partner is like, we just got to pick something. Right. And in the meantime, and you can think, well, they can make the decision if they're so good at it. What could, they might be tired of making all the decisions. They might be tired of making the decisions and also somehow not picking the one that you wanted because you wouldn't make the decision. So like it's there's this whole thing that can just go. And what it comes to is instead of focusing on this driving your partner crazy, which is only going to serve in keeping you frozen longer, because you're upsetting them. And when you're dysregulated, now you're pissing your partner off and upsetting them and they're frustrated with you. They're, you're driving them crazy with the words. Like that just like reactivates you and just, makes it even more impossible right. to make the Creates tiniest more frozenness. decision. Freezes you more. Right? So let's let's just push the partner part out of it for now and like really look about what it feels like in you. And what this decision paralysis is not being able to make a decision feels like in you and how unsafe it is that you're feeling, how scared that you're feeling and take time to like, look at what is this fear? What is coming up in you? And maybe like what would happen when you would make a decision? in the past what what results did you get from making a decision that wasn't the right decision and um what pressure was put on you to make these decisions who were you having to make decisions for that maybe you shouldn't have had to make the decisions for what you know decisions were you making at a younger age that maybe were too much for you or whose emotions was it up to you to handle or you know, just all of these things so just like really looking in where did it come from and what it feels like, what it feels like in you. And so getting to the root of that as opposed to, I'm just going to like make a decision, which, you know, there are tricks for that. And I think we talk about that at some point. I just had a, I just had a memory of that might've been on our community call. So join our community <laughs> might've been there anyway, sticking with this, just really giving yourself some compassion and what it feels like for you. And then think about how do you want to feel when making a decision? What do you want a decision, making a decision to feel like? What do you need in order to feel safe and secure to make a decision? And talking the emotional aspects of it, not what you need financially or physically or what you need somebody else to do. Just like how do you need to feel? What does it need to feel like in you to make a decision? And then... Like, I want to give you a chance to answer too. You're fine. Um, you're allowed to make the wrong decision. You're allowed to pick the wrong place to eat. You are allowed, like, <laughs> you're allowed to choose the wrong mop. You are not stuck with that mop for the rest of your <laughs> life. You are allowed to pick the wrong car. 
You are allowed to pick the wrong vacation place. You are allowed to get it wrong over and over again. And you are not ruining the lives of anybody. You are not ruining everything. You are still so, so, so worthy of love. And if you found out that like this, you were going between this restaurant or that one, or this brand of bread or that one, and you don't like it, then do it again. If you picked the wrong car, you know, yeah, maybe that's the car that you have for the rest of your life, but chances are you're going to have another car in there. You know, if you picked the wrong place to live and it's miserable, chances are you're, you're just like, things are going to, it's impossible to always pick the right thing and to have that pressure on you is unfair and it's unreasonable. It's just, it's cruel. It is just cruel. Um, so (laughs) I'm kind of spiraling off. You're allowed to make the wrong choice. You're allowed like play around with, you know, that whole like fuck around and find out when it's like this threat thing, like just like get excited about (laughs) making wrong choices instead of like, this is silly, but this is, this is a practice. And it's just something that just kind of like sparked here. Like instead of the pressure to always make the right, right choices, be okay with getting it wrong and be like, Oh, what's going to happen? Like, and I'm not talking about like being intentionally hurtful to people. This is not like doing wrong things to people. This isn't this conversation, but how you're moving through life, what's keeping you frozen, just have fun with it. And like, Oh, I've heard this phrase before. And this is probably why this sparked. There was like, there's this creator on some social media and it's like, how do they say it? It's like, go, I don't remember. It was like, go fuck things up go fuck things up, go make beautiful mistakes, go ahead and take the art class and be terrible at it. Go ahead and start the business that is wildly successful or it doesn't. And you have these things and you like, go ahead and take these big chances and make the wrong choices. Go ahead and choose to buy the wrong bread. Go ahead and make these. And you're like, yeah, great. How? I can't do it. And it's something small, just like really, really small. That's what I was going to say is like, start with small stuff. Like the whole idea is first and foremost, like in your question, I'm frozen, right? So (laughs) you're in an activated state, just acknowledge that. And when you're in an activated state, it's almost damn near impossible to make decisions because you're frozen. So just allow that that's going to happen and you're going to get through it rather than in that moment of like, I have to hurry up and make a decision implement some other somatic things to just calm yourself and get out of the activated state Mm -hmm. so that you take decision making off the table and you can have that conversation with your partner where it's like if i can't make a decision most likely i'm activated Mm -hmm. and i'm not going to be able to make a decision and forcing me or even trying to encourage me and support me all of these things that may or may not happen they're not going to change in the moment you just have to allow your nervous system to down regulate and to eventually calm down. And then you can either make the decision at that point, or you can just like, whoo, man, that sucked. We got through that. Mm -hmm. And then when you are calm and regulated, have fun with making decisions. And the thing that I was going to bring up is start reflecting on actually the decisions that you do make every day, Mm -hmm. because you are actually really good at making decisions. Yes. You make decisions all the time. Mm -hmm. You might not just think about it but you decide what you're going to wear. And that might be a really hard thing too, right? right? Sometimes that's super triggering for people where I know oftentimes we go look in our closet and we're like, I don't even know what I'm going to wear today. But like even just the simplest things of like, I decided I'm going to get a drink right now. Mm -hmm. I've decided I'm going to brush my teeth. I've decided that I need to go to the bathroom. I've Mm -hmm. decided, I've decided. You're really good at making decisions. Mm -hmm. So the decisions aren't the issue. The issue is you're activated at certain times. So then you have to go back to like what Steph was talking about with where did it originally start from? Mm -hmm. Why is decision making so threatening? And what does that stem from? And it might be the trauma from your childhood. It might even be just as simple as like we are indoctrinated in Western society to like, you know, multiple choice. You only have four options, but you have to pick the right one. Otherwise you fail. (laughs) I didn't even see that. So like, here's the question with two potential answers. One's correct. And the other one is you're fucking loser and you're not graduating from high school, right? Your life is over. You got an F. So there's some of that programming as well that we all have where Mm -hmm. decision making is really life or death. Mm -hmm. And then there's also times growing up, not just like 
in your lived experience, but in your genes and in your DNA where decision-making was very much life or death, where if you went left, you got eaten by a dinosaur as opposed to going right and you survived. So acknowledge all of those things and alleviate some of that pressure that you're placing on yourself and just realize, okay, okay, I can cut myself a little bit of slack. I'm going to allow myself to be frozen at times. Mm -hmm. And then in the not frozen times, have fun with decision making, bring awareness to the ones that you're already doing, and then just get fun and creative. Hmm. Do I really want chocolate or vanilla? I don't know. Let's see. I usually pick chocolate, but I'm going to try vanilla tonight, today, right? (laughs) Right. Just get curious with the little ones that seem like they don't have Mm -hmm. any significance because that's where you can practice that muscle and that Mm -hmm. ability to reassure yourself that it's all okay. Mm -hmm. You can pick and it's all okay. So practice, practice, practice. Yeah. I really like that. It's a good I question. I like that. There's um like one other thing too. If you have um being frozen and it means that you have practiced this. If this is like an ongoing thing with you, that means that it is like a skill that has been honed in. So like just thinking about how as a child you may not have been able to make the choices to make the decisions or you were parentified and decisions were your responsibility or you somehow had the emotional responsibility caregiving of others so many different ways that that could have come up of where decisions were your responsibility and they had massive consequences even things of like being a kid and getting in trouble as a kid and having your parent say that that reflected on them and you were responsible for your parents' appearance and how they seemed in society. So any decision that you made reflected your parents like, eh. Right, reflected like, on the family. That's so, <laughs> anyway, so all of those reasons that kept you from being able to make those decisions was a conditioning tactic. Your body was conditioned to this, which likely got re um like reapplied over and over again through that time frame, and then through other experiences where your body started seeking out and seeing this and it just kept being re-solidified and conditioned to now you as an adult have this belief in your body this is a response that your body is conditioned to and really this might not this may have been true as a child that but this is not true now now i am an adult and now i can condition my body differently now i can start these little little practices and so and just like you're unwinding you're unwinding this rope that got re-solidified and looped around over and over and over and over again and you get to say no i actually can take this now and i'm going to choose vanilla ice cream tonight and <laughs> and it's going to be okay and you might go oh I hate vanilla <laughs> it's okay they're all going to be okay <laughs> you know just these little things and giving yourself a lot of grace and realizing that it took a lot of practice and it's okay if trying to practice something different is really 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 hard yeah practice everything everything. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the question. As always, again, you can email those to info at energyislove.love or just go to the website. Our website is energyislove.love. And you can go there and send us a message, contact us, all the info for everything, including the podcast is there. Thank you everybody Thank for you. listening. Thank you. Share this episode with somebody and we love feedback. We want to know your thoughts as well. So comment somewhere. Somewhere. And let us know. You can find us. Right. See you guys next week. Next week, we're going to follow up on this conversation as well. Part two of communication. (laughs) We're going to get to it. (laughs) Uh, We have some things that we're going to discuss when it comes to like common pitfalls that happen in relationships and how to avoid them and bring awareness to them and also, you know, talk better. How to to do the talking better. better. How to do the talkie. The walkie talkie. (laughs) The talkie walkie.